Almighty Father, we thank you because of the opportunity to come to you again at this time of soul intercessory prayer. Lord, we pray, we that are talking, sharing, and praying for others will not be just mere preacher, prayer warrior. We'll be part of them that their soul have been saved, commissioned, and are having true compassion to create an environment for people to come into the kingdom so that we ourselves will not be lost eventually. Lord, pray for us and pray for souls. Thank you, Father. As we go into your word, Father, Lord, speak to us. Minister to us in a very dynamic way. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Today is our soul intercessory prayer. Sunday, 3 p.m. American Eastern Time. We are looking at Matthew chapter 18, 11 to 14. The book of Matthew chapter 18, verses 11 to 14. And as you are opening, the perfect law of liberty, the book, the book that made the simple wise. I want you to look at the topic. Listen, Christ driven purposeful preaching. When we say preaching, I'm not talking of just on the pulpit, going to the old world, going to the street, going to the corner. Even the example we show preaches. Our, our, the mirror of our life reflects to the world. So it should be Christ driven. So we are Christ driven. And purpose of the message is Christ's life to save souls. So let's look at Matthew chapter 18, 11 to 14. For the Son of Man is come to save that which was lost. Simple. That is the purpose of Christ's coming. To save that which was lost. Other things are additional agendas. Preachers. Converted soul. Commissioned souls. Sanctified souls. Holy Spirit filled people, if you are. The purpose is listed that is driven by Jesus. The Son of Man is come to save that, to save that which was lost. Simple mission, simple vision. Very easy to write down with preacher. That's the essence. Now, verse 12. Now, how think ye if a man have hundred sheep and one of them be gone astray, doth he not leave the ninety-nine and go out into the mountains and seek out that which is gone astray? And if so, you find it verily I say unto you, he rejoiced them more of that sheep than of the ninety-nine which went not astray. Fourteen. Even so, it is not the will of your father, which is in heaven, that now one of these little ones should perish. To save so he doesn't want anyone to perish. Look at the word of God. As I pointed you to the book of Peter, it's not slack concerning his promises, not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. Let's go to the word of God in Timothy. Open the Bible. You enjoyed your Bible opening. It's a very wonderful place that you can have a refuge and answers to streets. And difficult questions. First Timothy chapter 2, I read from verse 3 to 5. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved, to come unto the knowledge of the truth. Three points we are looking at today. One, Christ purpose to save soul. Number two, commitment of a preacher. To seeking the stream 
Then number three, celebration after painstaking salvation of soul. Hallelujah. Let's start from the first one there. In our study today in Matthew that we are reading, Matthew 18. Are you there with me, my friends, my people? Are you looking at it together? Matthew 18, verse 11. Christ's purpose is to save souls. Look at verse 11. For the Son of Man is come to save that which was lost. Now, the first question is, if the Savior is to save soul, and I want to save soul, I should accept him. But before we go into accepting him, because the first purpose is to actually accept him. Let's even deal with that topic first. You have not accepted the Savior and you want to save. It's impossible. So he made a call which is very popular. Matthew 11, verse 28. Simple statement a Savior made. He said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavenly, I give you rest. Simply, what he's saying is that before you give rest to others, before you help others, let me help you. That's what he's saying. Okay, you want to help people. I, I appreciate that and I agree with you. And it's not wrong for you to want to help. Help is good, but you first of all obtain the rest. Rest in your soul, rest in your uh, in your thinking, rest in your approach. Get a good rest. Anapao. That is what it means in the Greek language. Anapao. Rest. Where you are actually you are calming down. All troubles, all toiling, it's no more there. Anapao. Rest from Greek word. You rest. So the kingdom of God is side in you so that you can give it to other people. Are you there? Are you resting in Christ? Maybe you don't even understand that the Jesus is the way, the truth, and life. Nobody comes to the Father but through him. What do you preach? You don't know he's the only Savior that came to the world. What do you preach? You combine yourself with your religious people. You have competitive spirit. What do you preach? You don't know that you are free all together. You don't know your name is in the book of life all together. You are still a sinner. You call yourself a sinner. So what you tell sinner? A sinner preaching to sinner. The one that is blind leading the blind. You fall into pot. Oh, you don't have faith that whosoever the son have made free from sin, from righteousness, from sickness, from diseases is free all together. Free indeed. You say you are not free from sin and you want to preach to sinners. Think about it. It's by faith. You are not living. A life that is saved, a life that is saved, a life that is taken from the truncated way of life. You are not part of it. And you say you want to save so. Number one thing first, save yourself through Christ and save others. If you are not saved, just repent. Don't be, don't be high-minded. Don't be proud. You know your life, your character, your utterances. Even about this Christianity, your doubt about Jesus, your doubt about heaven, your doubt about ability to even get to the kingdom. Even you are not sure your name is in the book of life. Think about it in your closet. Not what you even confess. In your, even on time you don't confess it, you tell yourself, you tell everybody, ah, when you are even talking about it, you say it's not possible to be holy. You contradict the word of God. Why are you preaching? When it's not possible for the word of God to be real in your life, how can it be real in your life when you don't have faith in the word you preach? Leave it there and go and settle your problem so that you can preach effectively. Preach innocently, preach excellently, preach with all fat and figure that is abandoned in Christ that is living in you. So now the Christ giving purpose of preaching will be your ability, will be your capability, will be your work, finger trips, and the Holy Spirit will be preaching through you. Now let's look at an example. People want to deviate, divert the attention of Jesus. He came to save the lost. Look at what they told him. The people that are still carnal. I pray carnality will be taken away from us so that we will not eventually go to it because to be carnally minded is dead. Now look at it in Luke chapter 9. I started reading from verse 54. But and his disciples, James and John, said, saw this. They said, Lord, without that we command fire to cut down from heaven and consume them even as Elias did. <laughs> they want to go back to what God has abolished in killing and murdering Moses' law, they want to bring it up, they go to kill people, eye for an eye, two for two. That's what they do in their churches. 
praying that this enemy die. How many people do you want to kill? A sinner praying for another person, a sinner to die. You are a murderer with your prayer. Is it God that is God that is answering that prayer? You keep people said Jesus now answer in verse 15. But he turned and rebuked them. Don't pray for people to die. Don't call fire to kill people. He said, and he said, You know not what manner of spirit ye are. You don't know you are. You don't know your worth and your quality. You don't know what, what heaven has preserved and reserved for you. He said in verse 56, For the Son of Man is come, not to destroy men's life, but to save them. That they, and they went to another village. Hallelujah! They left a good legacy, not killing people in that village, but leave them with peace, with joy, that come unto the Lord. We are calling you to Jesus Christ. Call them. Save their soul. If you are not saved, if the Spirit of God is not you, if you are not ready, sanctify, you will not forgive. You will call fire to kill people, to kill your mother, to kill your people that offend you just a little bit. That you need to forgive in a day. Seven times seven. You don't even have a record. You will forgive anyone. You don't even want to know the number. Forgive so that your Father in them will forgive. Not killing them and raining abuses on them and raining pain. If you have done it, for confess and God will forgive you. God bless you in Jesus' name. Let's see as you come. In that I say, come unto me. Jesus said, come unto me. What that come interpreted to me is this. Come, count on me eternally. Jesus said, count on me eternally. That's come. That is strong word. He spoke it to Peter. Come. He spoke it to people. He said, come. Come unto me. He was talking to Israelite. Like, come unto me. All the word, come unto Jesus. He said, count on me. The only one that we can count on is the Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ. Who died for us on the cross? He said, Count on me. But that go to point number two commitment of a preacher to seeking the strain. That verse 12 in our study, uh, in our study in chapter 18, he says, I think he, if a man had another sheep and one of them be gone astray, does he not leave the ninety and nine and go into the mountain and seek that which is gone? astray are you ready to seek look at uh, look at the one of the fathers of faith in the book of philemon open your bible with me philemon you can see it over there god is calling my attention your attention into this look at verse let's start from verse 8 philemon verse 8 he said wherefore though i might be more bold to christ to enjoy thee that is in the income which is convenient for yet for love's sake i rather be seek thee being such as one has brought the age elderly, and now also a prisoner of Jesus Christ, I beseech thee for my son, once more, whom I have begotten in my bone, is beseeching, is looking for how to put solid succor for that particular son of his. I beseech you, verse 11, which in time past to thee unprofitable, now profitable to thee, whom I have sent again. Look at that a ability to seek people that are strained. Once Simon was strained, he brought him and he pleaded with Philemon, you to bring souls to the Lord and God will help us in Jesus' name. Look at what he said in verse 18. If he had wronged thee or owed thee ought, put that on my account. Can you see? He's, even, he's, he's actually responsible, vicariously responsible for that soul. That is how to seek those who are strained. Don't abuse them, don't accuse them, bring them, be in their shoe commit to sympathy and empathy especially empathy and be committed to compassion committed to that great commission of bringing souls to the lord we are seeing the last point today and that is celebration after peace take a savaging of soul we celebrate in jesus name when you bring this soul look at that verse 13 to 14 in our study open your bible with me to that chapter 18 matthew 18 our study 13 to 14 and if so you find it he was looking for soul he was looking for people who are lost the sheep is lost he left the 19 and i was finding one seek for them those who are lost in smoking drinking in alcohol those who are discouraged look for them he said verily i see unto you he rejoiced more of that sheep that in of the 99 which went not astray they are gonna still look for them those one we are praying for this we are looking for this we are looking for a job we are looking for that you are in christ already somebody is going to bring them in and rejoice even if it's not even so it is the will of your father which is never that one of this little one 
shall not perish. We shall not perish. That's the essence. Celebration. They rejoice. Are you going to rejoice? And I will tell you specifically, joy in heaven for the souls. Actually, the people that win so when we meet in heaven, we cause to rejoice. After this, that celebration after painstaking, it's painstaking of savaging or so. Those who are going to sleep, you bring them to the Lord. And I pray we shall be in the Lord in Jesus' name. Are you ready to rejoice with us here in heaven? Please pray, God, Father, I want to bring souls to you. I want to look for people that are lost and bring them in. That is the purpose to come. Help us. Father, we thank you so much. We are going to see you in heaven rejoicing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.